Made to Lead Millions podcast with visibility coach Crystal Henry. Discover our guest strategies and delve into their journeys to limitless success and inspiration. Let's enter the Made to Lead Millions zone. Hey, hey, hey. Coach Crystal Henry here. I'm so excited that you have made it to the Made to Leave Millions podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know how we do it. Every Thursday night, we go to the Lord in a word of prayer, have some announcements, and then get with our amazing guests. Our guests give us amazing stories of triumph, adversity, and how they overcame. And because they overcame, so can you. So make sure that you not only hang in there, but grab a friend, grab a pen, because you might want to write some of these strategies down. And you might want to remember who's being interviewed on tonight. Now, I'm Coach Crystal. I'm a visibility coach, an 11-time Amazon best-selling author, I am a TV show host, international speaker, and I'm made to lead millions. You need to connect with me at crystalhenry.net. Make sure you don't miss out. That's crystal with the K. So let's go to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we exalt you, O oh God. We praise you. We thank you, God, for being a phenomenal God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless this podcast, bless our guests, bless our um, phenomenal person that we are going to interview tonight. And Lord God, we thank you that we are so thrilled. We are so elated that you are our God and you have kept us. You have blessed us this year so far. We're about to leave the month of new beginning and go into the month of birthing. So we're ready to push out something great. Now, God, give us the strength, the power, and the might to do just that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen again. Hey, <clears throat> extraordinaires, I need you to make sure you go to crystalhenry.net. Check out our phenomenal group called the Emergers. If you have been needing to emerge, if you needed to come out of the shadows, if you are tired of being overlooked and underbooked, if you are tired of wanting to finish something but not finishing, this group is for you. Make sure you go to crystalhenry.net and connect with the Emergers. Join a group of like-minded people. The last shall be first and it's your season to become first again that's the emergers at crystalhenry.net and i also want to shout out to the women the voices of women unleashed in justice our book just <clears throat> our book just released recently and we are amazon bestsellers and it's so exciting we had a little book tour so we started off in kansas city at cider hill family orchard and then we'll be going to minnesota in september so um look out for us at stern's history museum in st cloud minnesota on september 20th Make sure you join the phenomenal authors of uh, Voices of Women Unleashed in Justice. And one more thing. I need you to check out or connect with me at Crystal Henry, Coach Crystal Henry on Facebook and Instagram so that you can keep up with where I'm going and what's going on. In the month of September, I'm going to um, Oklahoma, Minnesota, South Carolina and Texas. So make sure if you're needing a book, if you're wanting to be inspired, that you connect with me on all social media outlets and you will be blessed. So now, are you ready for our guest? Because I know I sure am. <clears throat> our guest tonight um, is an am amazing has an amazing gospel sound. He too, his love of Southern soul music is shared 
um, and he gives a solid message about Jesus who has been raised from the dead. So let's yeah. get together and, and and welcome Minister Redeemed. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you. How are you tonight? I am so excited to be on your show. <laughs> I am just so excited. <laughs> yes, I am. Great, great. Yeah, it's uh, Made to Leave Millions is a great place to be. So I appreciate you joining me on tonight. Um, we're venturing out and getting to more places where more people can hear us. So thank you for joining. Um, tell us a little bit about how, where you came from. Where are you from? I'm originally from Tallahassee, Florida, and actually I've moved back to Tallahassee, Florida to help my uh, my mother, and um, who my stepfather just passed away a couple of years ago, so I came back to kind of just be her support, and okay. uh, so I'm here. That, uh, that is a blessing. Tallahassee is beautiful. That is a blessing to be there for your mom, and I'm sorry um, for your loss. Yes, thank you. And so you are from Tallahassee. You know, I've <laughs> this summer I've been seeing a lot of things about alligators. So <laughs> do y'all have a lot of alligators <laughs> in Tallahassee? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, we we're we're not we're not that far down to uh the okay. water, so no. <laughs> good. <laughs> good, good. Well, what got you into gospel music? Well, you know, being raised up in the in the church, uh, mm -hmm. I love singing. I've always loved singing. And uh, my father was um, a presiding elder in the AME church. Uh, okay. My mother, my mother uh, and my uncles, they sing. Uh, that's what they did. And my mother played the piano for different churches. And every time she'd go to a church, you know, to play, guess who was there? <laughs> I was right, <laughs> right. there with her. <laughs> right. Uh, right. She was a part of the uh, Samuel Gospel Choir, the Internet, every choir that she was a part of, guess who was there? You <laughs> were <was> there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always had a love for, for singing and uh, just lifting up the name of God. So, Amen. Amen. Now, how did you get the name redeemed? I um, I'm an ex basketball player. Uh, that's what I did for a living for a little while. Uh, a recovered drug addict, um, liar, alcoholic, homonger, you name it. That's what I did mm -hmm. for twenty twenty three years and twenty one different treatment centers. And uh, after all all of that time, twenty years ago, God said enough was enough. Is enough okay? Said, I'm redeeming you for my purpose, for my glory. And um, when he did that, um, one of the things that he placed on my heart was the story about Jacob and how Jacob was redeemed from his name was changed. And God said, I'm redeeming you. I am sending you abroad with that being redeemed. And that name minister redeemed just kind of registered. And that's mm. what I kind of go by minister redeemed, redeemed from that to what God has called me to do. Amen. Amen. That and I love that because you have to really operate <laughs> in a space of redemption in order to carry that name and that title. So amen. Yeah. And I love it when God, you know, points out who we are in him. So that yes. is such a blessing. Now you say you play basketball back in the day. I did. I did. So tell did. me a little uh, bit about that. Well, you know, that was always my love. And uh, I, I went to junior, co junior college in Pensacola, and then I came back and I played at Florida and um, the Rattlers. Oh, yes, I'm 100% <laughs> Rattler. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I tried out with San Antonio Spurs. Um, oh. Got cut. And, oh, um, my dad, my this. dad, <laughs> what my dad would love to have seen yeah. you because he is a diehard Spurs fan and that's where I'm from. Oh, okay. It's okay. San Antonio. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I think I guess I just wasn't quite I didn't quite fit that mold, so I played in a professional league in Mexico for three years. Um, okay, and so um, I, I loved it. And um, I, up until about maybe eight years ago, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a slip and fall. And actually, a little bit longer than that. Oh my goodness! Time flies. It was two thousand and eight. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but um, I was playing strong up until the end, and uh, so. But yeah, that's that's my that's still my love. I love watching it. I'm a mm -hmm. Steph Curry fan. Yeah, I, I'm okay. a Steph Curry fan. <laughs> Don't tell it how it is. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is excellent. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> So let me ask you this question. Um, you know, you you obviously loving uh, Florida. You loving God's uh, music, um, and your voice is very um, strong and powerful. Um, have you ever uh, done radio or TV? I um I worked at a radio station in Cocoa, Florida, with mm. a guy by the name. Horace, the golden tongue, golden tongue. Um, what was Horace's last name? I forgot it. Just forgot his last name. But uh, he wound up back in Miami. But uh, I, I've worked around the radio station. I've not mm -hmm. really worked the radio station, but I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I chose to just work on my music. And uh, but yes, uh, I've worked around the radio station. I haven't worked in the radio station. So. Okay, okay. Well, it's, you have a radio voice, so that's that's why I asked <laughs> that you. question. Mm -hmm. okay. So, when um, with music, are you a writer as well? Do you write music? Does God give you songs to write? Yes. Oh yeah, uh, he's estimating about about over two hundred songs. Oh uh, wow! Okay. Mm -hmm continually some mornings he'll wake me up at two or three o'clock in the morning and you know i can't put the pen down until it's a completed song and just you know just i love it i really mm. do i love it amen amen and so how does god um you know give you those songs sometimes i'll get you know inspiration by seeing something or is it in your prayer time your worship time or you could be driving down the street how does god give you your lyrics all of those all of those <laughs> <laughs> i um i had an ep that i did i think it was two years ago mm -hmm. um and um, one of the songs on there is um um it was um so good and what was amazing i was riding to a, an award show that i was uh, headed to, they were gonna award me a couple of different awards and as i was riding up um, to North Carolina, and I'm not really supposed to be saying this on the air because uh, uh, maybe it's time past past statute limitation. I, okay. I was writing this. Song. <laughs> I was writing. This <laughs> I was writing this song, and um, you know, and it's amazing how he does that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's like again, I can't stop once he starts something, and it's mm -hmm. it's so hard. And I'm sure you know how that is. Mm -hmm. You get into a flow, and it's like you just, it keeps going, and you try to stop, and it's like, bam, there it goes. It'll just continue to generate. So it's like, it's all now. So. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Yeah, that that is amazing how God does that. And so um, I know you have an EP called Roll Call. What inspired yeah. Roll Call? Um, God had been really dealing with me about. Um, the heart of his people. And actually, Roll Call is the, this EP is the first part of the second EP. Um, mm. He had really dealing with me about his heart, about desiring his heart. And the title of the, the actual EP was supposed to be Show Me Your Heart. And in the middle of that, he started dealing with, it, with me about how um, time is running out. Uh, he's soon to return, and mm, for those mm -hmm. of us, time for preparation. There's an urgency, and the roll call came about when he was dealing with me about how, hey, listen, what happens if he were to call your name right now, first, middle, and last? What would he say? And so, as he mm -hmm. began dealing with, me, and just to let the folk 
his people know that there's a time of urgency. Tomorrow is a promise. Nobody knows when or where he's due to return. And so instead of not being ready, the, is your name on his role or is mm. your name on the road to not be in his presence for eternity? And so that's really what inspired Roll Call was saying. He was saying, tell my people, time is running out. There's an urgency to be connected to me, to know my heart, to know my will and my purpose for your life. And so that's where Roll Call was really inspired by. Okay. Wow. That that's that's heavy. That's a heavy message. Now do you play any instruments? Only the ink pen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wondered <laughs> you know, some people have the ability to play and sing and I you know, I feel like yeah. wow. You know, when you yeah. can do all of that, you know, yeah. that's a blessing. <laughs> but um, writing, writing and singing is excellent, too. So praise God for that. Now, your struggle, um, your struggles in life, because um, you said you've been to 21 different facilities. Um, 23, how- 23 years. 20, 23 years, yes, 21 facilities. Yes, yeah, right. Yes, right. 21 facilities. Yes. Uh, so had any of those times that you were, um, you know, trying to overcome your habit, was there any of those times where God uh, sent you a song uh, in the midst of overcoming? All, all throughout that. Mm. Um, Is there one that treatment. stands out? Yes, yes. Um, um, in... Um, I was in a treatment center, actually my last treatment center, next to my last treatment center, which was Teen Challenge. Um, uh, And I was um, on my um, my last um, um, last part of the the center, treatment center. And in that, um, God started dealing with me about um, manna from heaven, and mm. that song actually resonated, and that was one of on my first CE CD uh, was manna from heaven, and of how my hunger, my thirst for him was the desire of his presence, of uh, the desire to have more of him, and that song probably resonated more than anything for me mm. as I was right in that center um, because of my, my pursuit after him and I wanted him desperately um, and that's where that came, that song came from. Amen. Amen. That's very powerful and I know that um, you know this, the scripture that says train up a child on the way that they should go and when they're old they will not depart. And I can imagine yes. your mother praying that, you know, um, you know, numerous times because I know I've prayed that for my son. Yes. How how has the word and prayer impacted your life? Well, you know, and, and I, I talk to a lot of people, especially young men and um, um, telling them that it, no matter what, don't ever quit or give up. I talk to the parents and I tell the parents and the loved ones, no matter what, do not ever give up on your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father. Don't ever give up. Give them to God. And that the impact that it's had, remember the struggles that I had, the times in the drug houses and in the streets where I had been out for six, seven days on a binge, pawning my cars out. Uh, promising that once I got it back, I never would do it again. Mm-hmm. And to share with them, the mothers and those who have loved ones who are still struggling and, and falling back, that, listen, if God can deliver me, and I mm-hmm. was a wretch, if mm-hmm. God can 
show hope and there's help and there's healing for me. There's hope, help, and healing for your loved ones. So whatever you do, always remember this. Remember the prodigal son. He was wallowing in the pig's pen. And remember Jacob. Jacob was a con man, a shyster, but God transformed his life. Uh, and so those are the things that I tell the, the the people that I get an opportunity to share with about my testimony um, and that there's hope, there's help, and there's healing no mm. matter what. Don't quit, don't give up. And always remember that God says he's faithful and just to complete that which he's begun. And if he told you he'd do it, guess what? He's not a man, and he will not lie. He will perform it. So no matter what, no matter what it looked like, just remember God's got it in his hand. Mm, amen. Amen. Glory to God. That is beautiful. And that's phenomenal um, to be able to say those words to our listeners because many people um, give up. They, they give yes. up easily um, or they get they're so angry that they don't want to give their loved one another chance. So thank right. you for for saying that. Um, and then knowing that God is a God of multiple chances, you know, yes. endless chances. So that yes. that is um, where we can find comfort in knowing that he Absolutely. is there for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I, um, I have a song that um, mm -hmm. I released, I think, a little over two years ago that's called That's Not My Name Anymore. Mm. And, and that song, That's Not My Name Anymore, I travel all around uh, the country singing that song because people can resonate with that mm -hmm. because they remember they were, what mm -hmm. they were, uh, mm -hmm. and how if God can transform Jacob and if he can transform Saul into Paul and Abraham yes, into Abraham. Come on. Mm -hmm. No matter mm -hmm. what you have gone through, God is able to transform you, to wash you. Remember David. And so those are the things that people can re remember. Just think this hope that my name can be changed too from what I was. They called you junkie, drug addict, mm -hmm. among mm -hmm. prostitute, but that's what they call you. God said, that's not my name. He called me joint heirs. He called me more than a conqueror. He called mm -hmm. me deliver form. And so those are the things that I try to make sure I let them realize and understand whatever they were. Remember that that's not the name that God called them. Amen. Amen. Because we, you know, in the Bible, you, you hear the um, man with the withered hand, the woman with yes. the issue of blood, you know, the woman oh, no. at the well with with five yes. husbands and the one she was with wasn't hers. So we always right. try to keep that, you know, our past um, relevant and it's our past is no longer relevant by the blood of Jesus yes. It's who yes. he says we are. Yes. And so, yes. Yes. yeah, that that is powerful. And I can imagine that song has um, delivered a lot of people. Um, what is one of the most impactful times that you can remember when um, ministering in song? Um, like, did someone get healed or delivered? What is something that you remember that happened while you were ministering in song? I was in, um, I think it was Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I also write poetry. Mm, okay. We were we were um, in a church service that there was a young boy who was um, he had had a stroke. He I think he was fourteen. He had a stroke. He was also um, what do you call it when your hands are drawn? Um, um, oh, when uh, not. Um, what what is it called? Not paralyzed, but not um, paralyzed. Um, I know what you mean. What, but. but anyway, he had this, and, and his arms were there. And as I began ministering in song, I, I read one of my poems, mm. and then I began ministering. Um, and as I was ministering in song, and, and actually, um, "Manna from Heaven" was one of the songs that I had ministered. And then uh, there was a couple of other songs. God's going to work it out. 
And, mm, okay. And the industry, those songs, and you know, he was, you could see the movement in it, not only the movement, and he was so excited, and his, his mother and his parents and his dad and his little brother, they were uh, watching his, his excitement and stuff, <laughs> and he was so excited that, you know, you could just, it was almost as if God had just started me to drift. And normally I don't go all over the, the auditorium, mm -hmm. but I mm -hmm. think just drop, just being compelled to go to where he was. And I began mm. ministering a song over where he was. And it was almost like I, my purpose was to be there for him at that time, him and his family. And mm, as we were, okay. I was ministering a song, you could just see and the joy that it brought him and he was trying to sing the song and you know just the 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 joy that was all over him and for me that was probably one of the most just and, and i began to weep afterward because just to see that and to see what god what was doing and mm. kind of an atmosphere of i'll do it whatever you say Whatever you want to, just what you want me to do, I'll do it. But so just to watch him and God, what God had given me to speak to his people and to watch him, that just, oh my God, that just, that, that just did something. To, that broke something in me. That mm. really did. Mm -hmm. To see God move. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. In a mighty and a powerful way. Yes. What yes. is, um, when we think of, what you have overcome and come out of what is one of the the can you give us an instant of when you looked up and said okay god enough is enough can you tell us what was that breaking point oh, oh yes i can i uh out of all my years um 40 years um, I'd never been arrested. So after 20 to 20 years of using dope and you, that circle and that cycle, I'd never been arrested for drugs. Now mm. I got arrested, worthless checks, do the, the drug, recovering into getting drugs, got overdrafted and that. I had a DUI one time, but I've never been arrested for the drugs. Mm. And this particular night, about two weeks prior to that, I was coming up to, I think it was my 42nd or 41st birthday. And I said, God, you know, I'm tired. I, enough. is a, I'm tired. I'm going to do this right here and I'm going home. And you, if, if you don't fix me, just let me die. I, I'm, I'm, mm. I just, I, I'm sick of this. Getting up, letting everybody down. I've lost everything time and time again. Uh, and I was just sick and tired. You know, um, he'd always blessed me to earn income, lots of income. And so I never really liked anything because I made a lot of money. And, mm -hmm. But I was at, nothing mattered. No, I was sick and uh, sick of that, making money. The dope man was getting all the money, <laughs> my cars, everything, my marriage. I, I, I run all of that, and I was just sick and tired. Enough is enough. And mm. it was almost like he said, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got something it. <laughs> it was like he said, yeah, yeah, I'm about to show you. And so this particular night, I just cop uh, scored I, I was going to go and, and hang out with a friend girl of mine or, at least I thought I was and mm. so I and and just as I was getting ready to take off the police came I wound up getting arrested I stayed in jail for 28 29 days mm. and during that I think he gave me probably about 12 songs and about 20 poems Oh, wow. But I was in jail singing. I had the in, other inmates singing. I was, I was listening <laughs> to the poem. I mean, it was, it was just, it was crazy. But but in that, and I said, you know, I said, God, if you let me get out of here this time. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'll, I'll do whatever you call me to do. I, I, I hated rap with a passion. I hated mm. it with a passion. But God had been dealing with me about rapping, about my passion for the young folk. And he told me, well, what are they listening to rap? He said, well, when my son was there, 
he dealt with the farmers through seed talk and the fishermen through fish talk. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to let somebody reach them on a level that they can understand? Same. And that's basically how I began doing rap. And anyway, so that time, once I got out, I used drugs one time after that. And after that, it just seemed like he said, it's no more. Enough mm. is enough. And so they had withdrawals and they kept going back. But everything was taken away. It was gone. Nothing. That was, again, 20-something years ago. And I've not used that. I've not had a desire to use anything, any of that since. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. That is, um, you know, how God frees us. He gives us a way of escape. So praise God yeah. for your way of escape. Now, has was there any time um, where you felt like you were going to to die? Like what you were going through, this was it. Was there any? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, there were a couple of times. Um one time I was trying to hurry up and get some to cops and drugs and in the middle of that I was walking down the street and I got jumped on got mm. beat upside the with a gun um, just and, and I thought that was it I, I thought it was over that was one of the times another one of the times I had used so much drugs that, that all I, I remember was um that my heart was felt like it was about to bust out. Uh, mm. My head felt like it was about to explode. Um, and I, I was just, I was in a state of, I, I was afraid. Um, I was weeping in tears. I, I, I didn't know which way to go. I was just, you know, it was almost as if I had come out of myself. Um, at that time. And so I thought that was it. I thought wow. it was over. I thought it was over. Um, I think that was one of the, one of the other times that I can remember is I was in a drug house with, and I didn't know what I had got myself into, but some major drug dealers, um, with, um, they were, everybody was walking around with, a with, with um, um, machine guns, uh, pistol shotguns um, all kind of stuff and I thought that that was it they had my car um, and I just thought that was it I was I thought I, I got my I really got myself into this I never seen my children I never seen my mom um, and, and it was over I thought it was over and uh, so those are the times that I, I thought I was actually gonna die because of my addiction Wow, that is so powerful. So how do we get to, from there to the stone was rolled away? You know, I I was sitting there thinking about how God had gotten us to that place. Um, And and I think, again, going back to what I talked a little bit about earlier, about how um, God was dealing with me about making sure that the people understood that there's an urgency, but he also wanted them to understand because of his love for us, because of his sacrifice, because of what he had done, that he made a way for them to be able to have their name put on the road. He made a way for them to be able to have life and to have it more abundantly. He made a way that we could be forgiven, that we could be transformed, that that we could be changed from who we were to who he's ordained us to be, that the purposes that he or called for our lives, that because of his sacrifice, because of his suffering, because of his death and his resurrection, his coming back because the grave couldn't hold him. And that's what that stone was rolled away. The cross couldn't stop him. The grave couldn't keep him. Uh, that's where that came from is that God was saying now this is the hope that to get their names on the road but this is the hope that allows them the opportunity 
the liberty to be able to do that, to be able to say, my name is written on the road because he lives. I, I can face tomorrow because the grave couldn't hold him. My sins have been washed away. I can be made whole if I would just believe. And then all I got to do is accept him, his gift. And because that stone couldn't keep him because he is alive and death couldn't hold him because of that. Oh, yes, that stone is rolled away. So now my sins have been wiped clean. Like David said, created me a clean heart. The stone being rolled away allowed that to happen. And all we got to do is just look to him, the author and the finish of our faith. And that's where that came from. And now I can look back and remember I didn't die because he had a purpose and a plan that I could tell the story that the stone has been rolled away. That now no matter what it looks like or what they call me, that's not who I am anymore because the stone has been rolled away. Life is available for all of the lost. He's married to the backslider, and I was a backslider. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. But the stone was being rolled away, and that's what he wants them to understand. Now his hand is out and saying, come unto me. I'll give you the rest. I'll clean you up. I'll show you, open up your eyes and let you see the purpose, the joy that inside of me that I want to transform to you because that stone has been rolled away. Amen. Amen. Now, how can people get a hold of you? How can they find you and your music? They can. I'm on every musical platform that there is. Um, they can find me on my website, SaddiusBruce.com. They can find me on Facebook. They can find me on Twitter. Um, they can find me on um, every place that there is. I uh, all social media platforms, I'm available. Under Minister Redeemed? Minister Redeemed or Thaddeus Bruce. Okay. All right. That's that's excellent. And um, your website again? ThaddeusBruce.com. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, y'all heard it here. Make sure y'all write that down and get to his website and... and Follow him on all social media outlets. Are you on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. I was just about okay. to say, and I'm on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. And just every place I can spread the gospel. Uh, I am. I, I, uh, and also, Tony, Tony D. I, I mean, he, I can't say enough for Tony D. He he's he's always I mean he just opens doors and he's another a point of contact that you can always reach me through him. Okay, amen, amen. Now I'm a, I'm gonna just throw it out there. Now you don't have to. I'm, I'm about to put you on the spot, but can you sing something for us? I can, I can. Let me just see here. Let's just see here. Actually, I'm going to share this one little song. It's about to be released. Okay. Um, and um, matter of fact, it's called All of That. Okay. Oh no! I don't. You don't look. You don't need any music. Go ahead and sing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about my daddy for a minute because he's all of that, all of that, and then he's so much more, so much more, so much more. I want to talk about my daddy for a minute because it's all of that, all of that, and then he's so much more, so much more, so much more. 
He's the greatest, first and the latest, was, is, and forever shall he be. He's my bridge over troubled waters and Savior who rescued me, rescued me as it is. Everybody say yeah, say yeah, yeah. He's the reason that I breathe better than diamonds and gold. My joy, peace, and happiness, and he's the lover of my soul. He's Isaiah's Prince of Peace, and the bomb in Gilead. We make a chain breaker, and the best friend I ever had. Yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. Because he's all of that, all of that. And then he's so much more, so much more, so much more. Amen. Amen. Look, you almost took me in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <sighs> Thank you so much. I knew that you didn't need no music because um, <laughs> my first my first sermon I preached was in a men's prison. And um, the way uh, we used to sing during prison ministry um, with no instruments, but it, it just beautiful, beautiful, powerful voices. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Um, thank yeah. you so much for um, just telling your story, um, a story of overcoming, transformation, transition, triumphs. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that there's nothing and no one that God cannot heal. Mm. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, living a redeemed life is, um, it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's not easy. But with God, all yes. things are possible. So all thank things you. are possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Thank you for sharing. Thank you for um, joining us on tonight. Uh, I want to shout out to Jerry Royce. Thank you, Jerry, for um, just making Made to Lead Millions podcast possible. I'm so excited that we have um, been producing Made to Lead Millions podcast for a little over a year. And so I'm just blessed to... Um, be able to do this show. And so thank you so much, Minister Redeemed. Thank you very much, Brother Thaddeus. And I yes. wish you all the best with Roll Call and the Stone um, was rolled away and the many more things that you will be releasing in the future. Blessings upon you and your ministry. Um, and again, extraordinaires thank y'all for listening on tonight to made to leave millions podcast and i'll see y'all next week same place same time god bless god bless thank you dear ross thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Mm -hmm. Good, y'all. It's your man, Scola De Niro from the Multi Platinum District. Through him, and I'm proud to say that I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And now listening to my man, Jerry Royce, live podcast, the best international radio station in the whole wide world. Peace and love. Hi, I'm Al Caso, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And you're listening to Jerry Royce Live Podcast, the best international radio station in the whole wide world.